What's up, everybody? All right, I'm here with Shane. What's up? What up, man? We got that light. You just look like you look oh. like a like a mythical creature. Isn't it great? It's amazing. <laughs> He's got an amazing van that he has done, and he actually just told me that you're you're actually selling this now. We're selling it. You're selling it. So we're gonna get into actually pricing on this one because I never talk price, but we're gonna actually ask him about some pricing. Stay tuned for this entire van. It is a beast of a machine. Wait until you hear about the name and everything about it. Here we go. Shane, dude, what up? What's happening, my man? Dude, last time I had you on the channel, it's been a while. It's been a little bit. Talk to me about what you got. Oh, actually, even before we get into the van, tell me, you know, you got Landship, used to be called Customs, now it's Landship Vans is what you just told me. Yeah, my company's called Landship Vans. I have a background in electrical, solar, plumbing, and I used to live in vans for years, and then I partner up with really high-end custom woodworkers, and we just build one-of-a-kind masterpieces. If I say bold. so myself. That's a bold statement. That is a pretty bold statement. <laughs> I mean, I think they're pretty awesome. No, they're great. Power systems that are too big. You don't need them to be that big, but we like them big. No, I, and, everything, uh, everything's better just like, is. I mean, this one, the last one we built was really, really out there. Lots of crazy stuff. This one's a little more dead sexy zombie killer vibe. So this is the, uh, this is your apocalypse machine. Yeah, so this is the Landship Apocalypse Mobile. What chassis are we sitting on? So this is a 170 2021 Mercedes Sprinter, two inch lift, agile suspension, black rhino wheels, upgraded tires, backwoods mods, racks, Fiamma awning, the big bumper, big old winch. It's pretty much got all the all the stuff to be able to mow down zombies in an apocalypse. Usually I, I go, we tore the outside of the van at the end and we're gonna, we're gonna tour the outside okay. at the end. Cool. Um, but I will say at the beginning, like, like, we, like I said at the top of the video, we're gonna talk a little bit about pricing. You know, give me an estimate on just outside components that has been spent. Just the suspension and wheels and tires and racks and winches and all that crap. It's, it's, it's like 20K plus. Just I, I was actually gonna say more like 30, maybe 35. It's you're, you're not even including labor then. Right, correct. So I'm not including all my blood, sweat, and tears. We didn't talk about the vinyl. The oh, wrap. yeah, and then it has a badass wrap on it, too. <laughs> yeah, you have so, a wrap on it. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit off price, so that was sure. an estimate for everybody out there for that, because I know you're going to be a little embarrassed about this, but this is over 2000 200000 Yeah, for okay. sure. Just the car alone, with all the upgrades, is like... Hundred thousand dollar car. I was about know? to say, so, I, oh, in, in the state of California, which is where we are, a four by four Sprinter sitting empty, brand new, seventy five grand. If you go to the dealer, they're charging eighty five for them right now. Right now and they then are with all the like extra like sensors and automated driving and all the crap that they throw in that you know it, it adds up pretty quick. We try to do all the woodworking super custom. So which you did. It's not like a CNC kit that just gets thrown together real fast. Real traditional woodworkers that are trained in their craft, like putting beautiful wood together. Well, let's step on in. Right at the beginning of this uh, sliding door, do you mind turning the lights on? Because I guarantee you people are gonna start yelling at us. Oh yeah, we don't want angry people. So. You got a lot of lights. We got a lot of lights. We found these cool like square LEDs and then we like in. built the whole motif of the ceiling around this kind of square shape. I like so it. So we find all these squares, these, these like pop push handles and like we really like try to take a specific motif and like use it throughout the whole van. The ceiling has this type of shape and then the backsplash on the kitchen has this angular shape. Well, you've already touched on the design a little bit. I want to yeah. ask you about this layout. The layout is a little bit different only because of what's happening right here. I mean, but, this is a pretty standard layout, as you guys probably know. But what's but, interesting is it doesn't come out. Right, so a lot of people push this thing out far. I'm low-key loving that it doesn't. Yeah, way. so we actually originally built this thing for a client and he just hated having the kitchen out in front of the door. Just decided to turn a fold out instead. And it's actually really nice having this big open space. You can pull stuff in, you can store more stuff, you can put a, I don't know. like You can do gear right there. You can I mean, do you gear can do right there. It's a lot a lot of different options. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice little touch, I would say. And you still have a big kitchen space. And you don't have to look at a big, ugly, uh, you know, 
kitchen back from the outside. You've sure. got this uh, simple bench set up. It's not, there's nothing yeah. simple about it, but you know, obviously the lagoon, yeah, it's all, it's been done or whatever. You know. But what I find interesting is you have uh, two refrigerators in here. Yeah, our client um, originally, and just, just to get it off, you know, why is a guy building an epic band and selling it? I got Nate, he's an amazing dude. He traveled around all over for six months in this thing, saw everything, met a girl, and then just decided to travel internationally and is like bouncing all over the world with her. Man, I just want to pass this on to somebody who's going to use it more. And uh, luckily, he battle tested it and then I just, you know, made sure everything was dialed and now here we are. It has, uh, I think, 11,000 miles on it, so it's still under warranty. Everything is cool. pretty much good to go. Look at this. I can actually step over here. Yeah. Um, they have two refrigerators. You got this yeah. bench. This is a tried and true layout, but what is not tried and true is trying to fit two fridges and a slide out composting toilet that goes into a shower room all in one bench when you have 16 kilowatt hours of battery storage and two inverters for 6,000 watts of You of just power. gave us a whole lot of information that we're- So <laughs> every freaking eighth of an inch was accounted for on this side of the van. So when you pull this thing out, so Nate was a big, meat guy so he wanted an entire chest freezer full of his goodies move this out of the way you have this whole freeze this whole zone which can be one giant freezer or a big fridge and then we have this second fridge right here which was his uh just regular fridge for sure That's so you can store a lot of food in here if you're hunting elk you can butcher it up throw a good part of it in there be good to go for the apocalypse obviously obviously so when you're killing zombies you need a lot of food so what's tough is figuring out how to fit a big fridge and a composting toilet in under one bench putting a fridge under a bench everyone does that not so hard putting a fridge and a slide out land ship shit bucket the lssb under a bench <laughs> Not such an easy task. You're very proud of this. This is my pride and joy. Your, your the LSSB. Because even in your other van that I toured. Yes. Um, you had your own, you made your own makeshift compost. And now you've done it again. That actually yeah. is a slide out. Well, the other one was a slide out. They were out. both slide out. So, I mean, I'm a hippie at heart. We lived in vans, me and my wife, for years. And we actually used our compost to actually make compost. Oh. So that process made me really inspired about composting toilets. And so, the, but the thing that sucks about composting toilets is changing out the pee jug. There's no way to get around it. So what did you do? So pretty much the way these LS, this thing works is it opens up a hatch and then it slides out. So you don't have to deal with it when you're not using it. You can take a nice big shower. You're not having to like climb around one of those like fixed in ones. Designed a system that allows it to stretch out, but still the urine flows down out under the van into the gray water tank. And so you never have to deal with a pee jug. All you do is actually put, in, um, you pour down some urine neutralizing enzyme down the drain so okay. that the gray water tank doesn't stink. And then and it works really well. I don't know what you've put more investment into, the <laughs> toilet or your electrical system. Well, we'll go to the electrical system. The electrical system is like, I love you it. You spent a lot of time designing this. Well, I've spent a lot of time pooping in buckets. I, so, you know, like it's it's <laughs> uh it's it's it's, a, it's a something I really care about. I think we just found the clip that opens this entire <laughs> video. Is I spent a lot of times pooping in buckets. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about but just real quick yep. materials. What sure. like it looks like is that a fur on the side? So this is a western red cedar. Okay. Um we did teak for all of the finishing wood oh wow and then this is actually a teak um dude teak's not cheap yeah so everything is teak the flooring is made out of teak oh, all man. the trim is made out of teak and then this is western red cedar teak isn't cheap because it's the best <laughs> it's, it's, i mean it, it lasts forever and it's super waterproof and it looks sexy we wanted to like really highlight this red hue in the van and contrast the red to this like gray blue. And he just doesn't know about poop. He knows about woods too. Look at this. Woods are cool. We love wood. So I'm about all things natural. I, I probably spent 50% of this video talking about poop, but the wood is probably what you're gonna buy the van for more than the poop. I was gonna say people might complain about the, the setup of the whole kitchen. I was like mm. kind of crammed. However, you have that two feet coming out. You yeah. Got a lot of room right there. I mean, 
you know, you do all your cutting, all your food prep over here, cooking right here, and then you got a big deep sink right here. And then we've got reverse osmosis filtration for the water. What'd you use for a water heater? Uh, just one of those four and a half gallon electric hot water or electric water heaters. People always give you crap. Uh, I do. Yes, I know. It's so I know. funny. The lighting is a little different. Where did you find yeah. that lighting? You know, I spent a lot of time just like hunting on Google to okay. find little tiny uh details that fit the vibe so like, yeah. i'm all about like creating a really unique design and feel when you walk into the van I really love the color tones in here this is lime wash with i a, meant to ask you about yeah. this it looks like unfinished right it yeah. looks like a like a like a concrete -y kind so of lime wash is a natural paint that they've used for thousands of years and it's made out of like natural minerals um and it just gives this nice like texture to the wall and it breathes and then you put this wax over it that makes it super durable and, and waterproof. I like to have a little texture and a little feel to a van. And, and then we found this, this uh, tile is actually teak tile. Teak tile. Which um, our, 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 our homies at Indo Teak in San Diego, we were getting all the teak from them and we saw this tile and we were like, oh, that is itching. That, that's gonna go perfect in the van, so. All right, let's switch sides. I'm just gonna use our little slide out oh, step. That's one way to, to get uh, to get up here. So you got a heavy duty draw slide. That yeah. Is a, that is also a step to get into your bed. And it's a little shoe drawer. Shoe okay. step. It's a double, you know, a double whammy. Uh, actually, you, you know what? As I'm standing here, uh, before yeah. we get back there, you got an oh, interesting yeah, yeah. setup a little over tech here. Wall. Got the uh, Victron monitor system, classic. Got the lights. We got a uh, auto term heater system. It's got the elevation uh, altitude adjustment on it. So you can take it up to 10,000 feet. Remote for the nomadic cooling. This is a uh, 24 volt 2000. And so it's got 12,000 BTUs wow. of cooling. Designed the electrical system to be big enough to run that thing at full juice for like 13, 14 hours. Nice. Pretty hard to do in a van. You want to sleep comfortably and that will last you overnight. That's the, sure. that's the point of it. For sure. Yeah, and even if it didn't, we installed an auto start system on this thing. Okay. So we have an auxiliary alternator that pumps 150 amps at 24 volts, nice. which is a lot. And if the batteries ever do get below a certain percentage, it automatically starts the car to recharge the batteries with those. So hypothetically, if you have an animal like a dog and you're out on a hike, and your batteries yes. dip on a cloudy day or whatever, it will automatically kick on. So that's the exact purpose for this, right? Got it. So like having a pet, going to a national park, you can't have the pet in a national park. Nope. You're not afraid of leaving the pet in the car with the air conditioner running because you know if the batteries get too low, it'll rip. As long as you have a full tank of gas, you're fine. And then it once once it charges the batteries up to above 75%, it just turns the car back off. That system is, in my opinion, like, I love solar, big solar guy, but like if you're gonna drive a van with a giant diesel tank, you might as well use it. Yeah. Was that an easy system to install? No. So the auxiliary alternator, I just hire a mechanic to do that. Yep, because that's a whole because other piece. I just don't wanna mess with that. But the auto start system itself does require opening up the panel, doing some wiring, getting into the engine, getting the ground. Like if it's your first DIY build, don't do it. <laughs> or hit me up. Or hire somebody. I was going to say, yeah. or hire somebody, You're right. And then you have the WeBoost, which you didn't say. But oh, yeah, okay. yeah. WeBoost, press this button, turn it on. And then these two buttons, this, you turn it on, and it actually is electric heating for the plumbing under the van. So oh, nice. all the under van plumbing, we put electric heat tape and insulate. And then this one, you press a button, and it opens up a one and a half inch uh, motorized ball valve. The ball valve, yeah. So it dumps. Let's go to the bed. You've got. Yeah. You know, this is a 170 Sprinter, so you better have a big bed. So yeah, you know, it's a big bed. You sleep sideways. If you're six foot tall, you don't have to. Are you six foot? I'm six foot. You got flares on this bad boy? No flares. The way that we insulate is we go first with a layer of lizard skin to create a the thermal, um, break. thermal break. Yeah. And then we fill in whatever we can with poly iso rigid foam board because yep. that just gives you the highest R value. And then we actually blow wool into the walls. So it fills in all the nooks and crannies behind mm -hmm. every little crevice of metal. So it's pretty much the best you could get if you're not gonna use spray foam 
And using spray foam in the van is a terrible idea, so don't do it. Nobody yeah. ever talks about what's behind the walls, right? But Dude, insulation is the most important thing. Oh, thank you. It is so yeah. important. You have almost a queen, I would say, then. Yeah. It's a cut it's it's cuddleable. It's cuddleable. Cuddleable. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then obviously right above the bed is you have that pneumatic cooling unit. Yep. The pneumatic cooling is up above the bed, so sleeping in hot nights in the desert, you're you're able to be nice and chilly. Nice and cool. One seven, you get all this room, you got you've got your bed, you have a shower, you even have storage, mm -hmm. you've got your kitchen bench. Yep. Uh, I think it's time to move to the outside. What do you think? Let's do it. We can talk a little bit about your last van had the solar sail. Yes. You do not have a solar sail on this. The solar sail is epic if you want to be way off grid. Yeah. Because then you don't have to rely on your gas tank to recharge your, ba your, your, your batteries. And it's epic if you're a big surfer like me because you can put 10 foot long surfboards up there. Nate didn't need the, the either of those two uses and so didn't need the solar sail for this one. Instead, you put what rack up there? So this is Backwoods Mods XL rack. You match the Backwoods with the bumper they Yeah, they yeah, and so the bumper is also a Backwoods Mods bumper and then we got big old 12,000 pound winch, bunch of lighting in there. Yeah, and then big old Fiamma awning. Can we? Sh can you show me the back now? And, yeah, and let's maybe... do it. Go in here. Big Got old the, garage. Uh, the old faithful skateboard. Throw the lighting in here. After this tour, our big fans of huge, crazy electrical systems. Yeah, you're and right. land ship. We wanted to make this cabinet kind of a highlight of the van, and so we lit up this wall, made sure that all the wiring was super sexy behind a wall, um, blue C breaker panels on the side. So this is all like primo equipment, you know? Like you could spend a lot less money and just get, you know, fuse blocks, but having actual circuit breakers that flip on and off is yeah. way nicer. Let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. You've got two 3000 watt inverters to make a 6000 watt total. Yep. You probably wired it in parallel? Yep. To make a 6000 watt? 100%. Why didn't you just do a 6,000 watt inverter? Because it wasn't going to fit. Okay, so you did size-wise. So size-wise... I don't even think Victron makes a 6,000. They make so a 5,000. Victron makes a 5,000, but it's just really big. It is. So it would have taken up a ton of the garage space in okay. this design, and I had like zero room to work with. I'll climb in here. Yeah, oh God, now, we're, now, we're getting, now we're getting into it. Oh yeah, getting my monkey position. And wow, and this, you've got three batteries. Yeah, in so these are the bigbattery.com. Shout out to Big Battery, they're- Holler. Um, and you've used them in the past, I believe too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing that's epic about Big Battery is you can get an insane amount of power in a small space. So we were trying to ideally have the air conditioner be able to run for 12, 13 hours. Yep without having the auto start turn on the car because he didn't want the car starting in the middle of the night. So being able to fit, I mean, this is 16 kilowatt hours of power. So that was my next question is, yeah. you've got three batteries there. Those yep. are 24 volt each, yep. not 12. So you just said 16 kilowatt hour. Yeah, a little bit more than 16 kilowatt hour. A little bit more. And yeah. I'm sorry, because Big Battery makes, I think they have like 27 batteries or something ridiculous. Yeah. Which ones are these? I think this is the Husky Elite is Husky what they're Elite. called. And I think it's like 234 amp hours at 24 volts or something like that. So if you did it at 12 volt, it's double that. Correct. Okay. So it's really, this is like a 1300 amp hour if you're counting in 12 volts. Correct. System. Do you have a step down? from? So yes. So if we're looking in here, here, I can open up. I mean, you don't have, even have to open it up. I don't open it up. It's, right all, it's all plexiglass, baby. Yeah, so we got... Oh, there's your step down right So there. we got the Lynx distributor, yep. which is classic. Um, goes to the step down. So we step down 24 to 12 volts for the 12 volt appliances. There's a lot of stuff that in vans that you just can't get in 24 volts. Yeah. Victron solar charger, got the servo, and then these two inverters to create the 6,000 watts. Um, the reason you do that is because you want to plug in a chainsaw or, or a laser beam to kill zombies with, you know? You want to have no limits to your power. You're, you're not apocalypse. giving up on these zombies, are you? This is a zombie killing death machine, you know? This is what that's built for, so. Dude, uh, those batteries are sick, and you did it so well in there. Oh, it's clean. Good. In my opinion, there's nothing better than a nice, clean electrical system. Believe me, you know, right up there with like 
compost toilet videos and <laughs> pimple popping videos are like clean electrical oh, jobs. Like that's just like really gets me. Do you want to come out and help me with my uh, my electrical setup and my, my time? Hell yeah. All I, right, I'm dude. trying to go to Maine. I actually help people by designing electrical plumbing systems and all layouts for DIYers. Yeah. So if you're doing your own van and you're feeling uh, a little confused about all this stuff because this stuff is really complicated and takes a lot of knowledge hit me up so you got electrical that is one of your pride and joys in the on this yep. side and then you have water over here yeah uh, did you say i'm sorry did you say how, how big your tanks were uh 35 gallon over wheel well tank okay and then from the from your the, your homies northwest yeah northwest holler at your boy northwest customs they hooked they were super cool yeah by the way i'm gonna shout them out because one of our tanks came and it was like malfunctioned. It, there was something wrong with it. And they just literally overnighted a new tank to us, no cost. Oh, so you yeah, got yeah, the yeah, hot water tank? So we got the hot water tank. This thing, um, the key with one of these is you just turn it up all the way so it's super freaking hot. Okay. And then you have four and a half gallons of really hot water. And then you, when you're in the shower, you mix it with some cold. Oh. And so that four and a half ends up lasting for like probably a 10 minute shower. I do build recirculating showers for people too. You did in your last van. I did in my last van and they're freaking awesome. But, but. Our, our client on this van was really focused on maintenance. I love research showers, but if maintenance is like one of your, like low maintenance is one of your top priorities, like it's not for you. And then, yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't have to go in here, but we've got a whole nother filtration system in here. That's awesome. Dude. Because we want all the water that goes into the hot water or the the water heater to be <laughs> purely filtered because what ends up happening is if you l like have hard sediments in your water yeah. and they sit in a hot in a water heater like this it'll mess it up after a while all the water in the van is triple filtered um pretty much the same filtration system that most houses use it goes down to 0.5 micron so the shower water the sink water everything and then we have an additional reverse osmosis system so it's kind of crazy filter that's water. awesome. Shane, I don't know what else you can really show me. Um, I mean, I am obviously impressed with your with your with the woodworking talent, your electrical system, and your biggest pride and joy, which is your pooper. <laughs> I mean, the only other thing is on the roof, we've got 600 watts of walkable solar panels. Oh, no big deal. And um, so you can go party up there. Let's party and up. And best way to contact you is? Hit me up on Instagram. Okay. And um, I'm sure we'll have the link under there. And then I got a website too. Okay. And yeah, just DM me or hit us up on the website. Sweet, man. Well, thank you so much for showing me this beast of a machine. If you also are interested in purchasing it, for sure. uh, obviously contact you. Uh, please don't contact me because I will just forward you to Shane. Uh, but you can say hi to me if you'd like. I will try and update people if this has sold at the point. Um, but if uh, people want to know, it is probably going to be over that 200 mark. Yeah, for sure. If you were going to hire us to build this, it would cost a lot more than 200. Uh, yes. <laughs> and they're, they're actually giving you guys a, a good rate at this one because it's been used. Any words of wisdom before we leave us? Keep it real. Keep pooping in compost toilets. <laughs> keep building crazy electrical systems. Keep living in vans. Van life is freaking awesome. Keep it alive. Van life is freaking awesome. Yeah. Keep it alive. Best way to end it, man. For sure. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Cool.